this is Cave Sipes from Custom Audio Reimagined and the fabricator from MTV's Pit My Ride. If you don't recognize me, it's because I got old, fat, and bald. Today, we're going to review the Ecstatic Batcap Model 800. This battery was given to me at the Alabama Car Audio World Championships. I was told that if I were to put this in my car, I will see better performance. The one thing about all my reviews is going to be it's all tested, gorilla style. I will test it as if you were using it. There will be no number play, there will be no I'll throw specs at you because that means nothing to most of you. You don't really care with cold cranking and reserve amperages for a battery. You just want to know if it'll work. All manufacturers out there, be warned, if you want me to test your product, I'm going to beat the hell out of it. So, how are we going to test this? Easy. We're going to use my car and we're going to do it just like you would, real world. So we're going to bring my car in here, it's running a stock alternator, stock battery. We're going to check my voltage standing. Then we're going to start the car, check the voltage with it running. Then we're going to run a sweep through my system with Term Lab so we can see what the SPL output is. And we're going to see the voltage drop during that sweep. After we have all those readings, we're going to go ahead and rip out the factory battery, install this back cap, and we're going to do it all again. And we're going to see what happens. Hopefully the numbers give us what we want to see. I'll see you guys at the car. Okay, so here we are in the trunk of my car and I have the voltmeter hooked up to my battery car is not running we're just taking a resting voltage as you can see I'm sitting at 12.34 12.33 if you pay attention to the digital voltmeter that's on the uh, battery clamp that I have there it says 12.8 that's proof right there that you can never trust the uh, digital voltmeters uh, they basically need to be calibrated they're not always calibrated correctly so I'm sitting here with a 0.4 volt difference between the two. So if I were to look at my voltmeter, I think I got 12.8 volts. I may be pretty happy with that. Put my voltmeter on there, I actually see that I'm sitting at 12.3. It may not seem like a lot, but that's quite a bit of a difference when it comes to audio. Um, so now that we've got this, let me go ahead and get in the car and start it. And now we see that we've jumped up to 14.3, 14.35. I saw on the rev there it was at 14.4, which is where you're supposed to be. Your alternator should be kicking out 14.4 volts. If you look at the digital voltmeter, I've got 14.8. Wow, I'm really rocking. I'm almost at 15 volts. There might be something wrong with my alternator. Can't trust those. You always want to have an actual meter and check them. Notice it's dipping now, 14.2. It should stabilize around 14.2, 14.3. That is the factory battery with standing voltage and running voltage. The running voltage should be the same with the ecstatic because the alternator is not going to put out any more voltage than the 14.4 gate allows it. But the standing, if it could stand at 13, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> but we'll see what it can do. We'll go ahead and uh, get the term lab set up and we'll see what it does on the sweep. We'll see what happens when we start running some audio through this thing. Okay, let's go ahead and run a sweep through here, see what it does. I'm not expecting high numbers. Like I said, this is my daily driver with the kids, so don't be expecting some big 140s, 150s out of this thing. I just want to see what the voltage does and I want to see where we're at so we can compare it against the ecstatic. Looks like 131.8. Wow, that's pretty weak. But uh, now it's time to take out this battery. Uh, I don't know what the voltage dropped to because I was in the car pushing the button, so I'll check it out later. But now it's time to pull this battery out, rewire everything, throw in this ecstatic, and hope that it does better, or it's going to be a lot of rewiring back to put the factory uh, battery back in. Okay, so. The ecstatic battery is now in. I have to say it's very Frankenstein-y looking in there because uh, it is literally a quarter of the size of the factory battery. So I don't know if uh, you can see in there how ridiculous it looks. All that dead space, that's where the old battery was. And then now I have this little battery in there. So it's almost a Frankenstein session going on in there because obviously I didn't design my system to be wired to this battery. So I've got lines jumping all over. Now, in the process of putting in this battery, I came across a few things that need to be pointed out. This battery was not made for a large system. It's not made to handle two gauge and four gauge type wire. It's made for eight gauge systems and along those lines. Multiple wires, multiple hookups, that's not what this battery is made for. 
I know that. The company told me that when they gave me the battery. Um, the problem I come across is here, let me see if I can get this in here so you can see the terminals. If I can get back. I'm not sure if you can really see that or not. But the terminals on this battery are basically equivalent of motorcycle terminals. Take off my negative terminal there, right there. That little screw, that's your terminal. And also it's recessed almost a quarter of an inch down. That recess allows you to only come in two ways. You see how I have this one coming across the top because that's the car's main line. I didn't have a choice. I mean, I didn't want to sit here and have to extend the line. But uh, I had to put in another bolt on this side to make it long enough to actually hook up those two rings because the bolts aren't long enough. That is an issue. Um, I called the company. I spoke to them about it. There is no solution to that for this battery. There are other batteries, they actually have terminal tops that you can mount, but on this battery they don't have any kind of add-on solution. So, the solution they gave me was, if you can see through all the wiring, the two distribution blocks. I mounted distribution blocks to the side of the battery and that's how I ran everything out. Um, again, this battery is not made for large systems, so if you have a large system, I would not recommend it. I would step up to the larger batteries that they do make, but this is the battery they gave me to test and that's what I'm doing. So uh, we'll go ahead and carry forward. As you can see, I'm sitting at 14.2 volts. The car is running right now. I figured I'd go ahead and give it some charge, get it built up before we do a standing voltage. Okay, here we are set up with the ecstatic battery. I've put a couple hours of charge on it. Sorry for any background noise or people you hear talking. The kids are out of school. Here we are sitting at a resting voltage of 13.15 volts. So I'm about between 13.15 and 13.16. That's my at rest voltage with the car not running. Uh, if I remember right, that is higher than the other battery. The other battery was sitting at 12.8. Uh, maybe because my other battery is old. But regardless, this is sitting at a higher resting voltage. Um, as you can see right now with the voltage, with the car running, I'm at 13.7, 13.8. That's a little concerning also because previously we were at 14.1, 14.2. I'm not really sure what would cause this battery not to want to see the 14.4 coming out. Maybe it's not got enough charge as of right now. It's sitting almost half a volt, a little bit over half a volt less than what the original battery was sitting at. So what to do next is the Termalab test. Let's go ahead and see if we gained anything. Exactly the same, 131.8, which is exactly what we had with the stock battery. So, all the testing is done, and I have reached out to Ecstatic, actually, and called them, questioning them about my concerns, how I was showing 13.8 volts with the car running when previously I was at 14.3, 14.4. I kind of feel stupid. I don't know if I should have known this, but apparently my car has an electronically controlled alternator, and once the battery is capped off, it actually backs the alternator down. So the alternator does not put out 14.4 volts once the battery is topped off. It actually backs it down to 13.8, 13.6, whatever it needs. So... Thank you to Ray McKenzie at Ecstatic for educating me. I was not aware that that was the case. So my concerns were not needed. There was no concern. It was acting just as it should. That being said, my final thoughts on the Ecstatic battery, Model 800, is it is a definite buy. Now, after testing this battery, I'm really curious. What would happen if I put in a bigger Ecstatic battery? What if I put in the Model 2000? Would I see an increase in term lab? I was hoping to see some performance increase with this 800, but I didn't, but I can't be upset by that. This battery is tiny. It's the size of a motorcycle battery, and it's running my car, which is a 5.7 Hemi. When I spoke to Mr. McKenzie earlier, they are going to send out a 2000. And when that 2000 gets here, I'm going to take the 800 out. I'm going to go ahead and put the 2000 in, and we're going to do these tests again. We can compare them side by side. I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen. So the final question. Should you buy an ecstatic battery? Yes. I'm going to run ecstatic batteries in my cars from now on. I'm impressed by what that little battery did. Ecstatic 
gave me a battery at a show, not knowing anything really about me, and trusted that I would do a review on their product, and they had enough faith in their product that they were not scared to hand it to me. That alone tells me all I need to know about the company. The 2000, when it comes in, I can't wait to do the review on it. I want to see what happens. But ecstatic batteries, their banner's going to go on my wall, and the only thing that goes on my wall is winners. I appreciate you watching my review, and until next time.